Oh man! Oh, you got your Wrexham scarf on. I put my scarf on. Um, you know, you got to enjoy the wins. I I just watched a, a, a Wrexham win. We're top of the league. Um, we're in first place, and that feels good. And I know that's I know this isn't a Wrexham podcast, but you know, it's you got to you got to enjoy be the number moment. one. It's good. It feels good to be in first place. Mm -hmm. yes. You know what else feels good? Uh, watching this episode. Maybe my favorite episode thus far during the rewatch. Really? Truly. Up there for me too. It's yeah, yeah. it's up there mm -hmm. probably one of my top 10 episodes of all time. Same. I feel like I say that a lot, but um, yeah. I, you want to do us an intro, Meg? You yeah, wanna, like, um, so? sure. Uh, we're getting right into the episode. No, none of you are coming in hot you about know, well, let's no, see. No, let's get the fans what they want. They want to hear us talk about the episode. This is a good one to talk about. We're in the process of working on the show, so it feels like it's very present in our minds how things happen and, and how, how they happened. Mm -hmm. so let's get people, into it. Well, okay. I mean, unless we want to give some people some context of where we are. We are one day out. From production on season 16. It's always sunny tomorrow, baby. in 16 Philadelphia. Tomorrow. We start filming tomorrow mm -hmm. and we're finishing things up. Yeah, we're uh, in we're good a shape. little behind on a few things, but. No more than other seasons. We usually no. have one script or two that we're like, okay, we're going to be working on those in our trailers. That's but, right. That's uh, right. We got it there. That's where we're at. It's fun to watch an episode like this, though, because it gets me excited to act. To transition yeah, into acting too. on the show. Me too. It's a good, like, uh, they can feel like this. We're doing something right. Mm -hmm. Great. Very inspiring. Very inspiring. It's very inspiring. Megan, right, let's tell the audience now. what the episode's yeah. about. So uh, season five, episode two is what we're discussing today. The Gang Hits the Road. It aired on September 24th, 2009, was written by Charlie and Glenn and directed by Fred Savage. The gang tries to expand their horizons by going on a road trip to the Grand Canyon, but they hit a few speed bumps along the way. Mm. Oh, yeah. More than a few. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Charlie, I remember writing this episode with you. Uh, it was the first year we were in these offices mm -hmm. on the Fox lot. Mm -hmm. However, we were one floor down from here. We're on the fourth mm -hmm. floor. We were on the third floor when we wrote that. We were in the exact office below the office that mm -hmm. we've been writing this wow. entire season from. And all, as all the, the creeps can tell, it's it, it's so inspiring. It's the decor inspiring. is very... It's so yeah. inspiring. And by the way, Meg put these up mm -hmm. uh, yeah, here just to have see something to break up the walls. Otherwise, oh, it's just, just a, white walls. Just a white room yeah. uh, with mm -hmm. windows, which are not, which are nice. Mm -hmm. but, uh, sterile. Very, very sterile. sterile. But I like to start from a sterile place, you know, before I get things dirty. Okay. okay. <laughs> you, like the, the, you like the purity of the, of the okay. story. Well, I like it, it forces you to go somewhere else in your mind, and that is your imagination, and that's where stories come from. <laughs> yes, it is. He's right. He's right. But Glenn, uh, tell me about what happened. <laughs> well... <laughs> We had a lot of fun. We were having a lot of fun. Um, I, I don't remember exactly how specific and extensive the break was, but I do remember that it came to us very, very quickly. And we had a draft, an entire draft of the episode done by the end of the first day of writing with it, which is outrageous. Um, it just happened very, very quickly. And I don't even think we changed that much. We, we always, you know, we went back through it and we, because it had only taken us a day. We were like, let's just take another day and, and go back through it and make sure that everything's as good as it can be. But it just flowed really yeah, nicely. I, you can tell like watching it and my favorite thing is when we're writing and you hit, you hit that thing where the writing is actually doing the breaking for you. So like you've done some breaking, but you're coming up with things and how you execute a scene that you're like, oh, we'll, we'll actually pay this off later. So things that I imagine weren't in there as, as we were like writing it, I, I remember these kind of things coming up, like probably like the pee in the window joke and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know, this one. Do you clicks. remember, do you guys remember where the, all the fruit stuff came from? Or the, the, Scott the, Martyr. Yeah. Yeah. So our writer, Scott Martyr. Yeah. Discovering that he, yeah. It never had a blueberry. I he had never it. eaten a blueberry and <laughs> yeah. we just couldn't <laughs> believe right. that a person had never tasted a blueberry. It was and astonishing. Then, and, and that was just the beginning. Then we really got into listing all the things that he had never eaten, and an apricot, yeah. uh -huh. a, a pear. Uh -huh. And it wasn't just fruit specific, no, it was vegetables. Other. It was other, like, 
certain kind of like a chicken very sandwich. It was very, strange. very, very common foods, like extremely common foods, not rare foods, not exotic foods, very common foods. Yeah. And he had not had a number of them. It wasn't, you know, it's very, it's, it's one thing when somebody's like, I don't, I know it's weird, but I don't like blueberries. Okay. I get that. <laughs> a little weird. Blueberries are delicious. Never but tried it. Never even tried one. Never tried them. But, he, but, he, but every once in a while, he'd bring in like smelling salts and he'd be like, let's do these today. Yeah, sure. And then he'd smell those. How do yeah. you get that far in life without trying a blueberry? Well, you know, that'll be a question for when we do the Martyr and Yeah, Roselle let's podcast. save that for when, when he's, um, he's not here today, right? He's not here today, but yeah. they have agreed that they will record All right, we'll bring them in. Oh, so. thanks. <laughs> oh, you are going to deign us with your presence. Oh, will you? Yeah. All right. Well, we've well, only we'll kept you employed his... for 15 years. Well, but sure. Yeah. You guys Carter are runs. missing fun conversations in the writer's room with them. Like uh, Roselle and I talked for an extensive period of time about nitrous the other day, which was fun. Sure. Because yeah. I was going to go get some for like a little outpatient procedure. And he was like, oh, oh yeah. What happened? With, did, did you have the nitrous? Yeah, I did. And, and how, felt, how was that? It, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. I uh, thought it was going to be strong and it was fine mm. yeah they were like it feels like a warm blanket kind of like come like kind of sitting and it was good but i don't think it had the strength of the kind that roselle is talking about which is when you just huff off of a, yeah. a, a like a, out of a balloon out of in a, a can. Yeah. parking lot at a fish yeah. concert yeah. and yes. then you you basically go brain dead <laughs> yeah. for 30 you go brain seconds dead. and yeah. then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everything just goes whoa, 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 yeah. 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 you fall whoa, down whoa. and right and you're like yeah that's what it is. that's what i remember i remember yeah. there always being this whoa 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 it's whoa, the sound of your brain dying like a little bit it's the sound of the blood trying to um but yeah, it wasn't as good. But, you know, it's because it was administered to me by a doctor and not a whipped cream can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a fish. Or, or another 14-year-old uh, yeah. who, who had the cracker. Yes. Do you remember yeah, that was yeah. the thing that actually got into the nitrous was the cra was the cracking tool? No, oh. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh so you guys don't, then, the you didn't, then you didn't do whippets. No, I did whippets. <laughs> I did whippets with the... Oh, 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 the big... You did the big nitrous I did. Tanks. Yeah, yeah. We had, we had tanks. Well, you know, you could buy the individual yeah. ones. And oh, then it was, it was yes. almost like the keg tap. Whoever had the cracker is uh -huh. the person who had the, the, the tap. Yeah. That was the that was the, the tool that would allow you to crack the thing open and then fill up a balloon. And it was just another 15 year old I just, who was in charge of the cracker. I just Full now that knowledge. I've got kids, I just <laughs> How did don't I? want to think about that for my kids. I I'm happy to say I probably only did. I could probably count on two hands the number of times I actually did it. Maybe three hands. Uh <laughs> sure. Well, but you hit a certain point where you, you realize, okay, I'm going to stop doing that because I, I truly yeah, believe, right. I don't even love the sensation that much. It's not that great. I'm just going to experiment with it. And then I realize I'm actually killing myself. Mm -hmm. And then there were the kids were like, I'm going to do this Forever. every day. Forever. 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 And then you realize, well, they're going to do lots of things every day. And that's um, right. hey, look. Mm. Speaking of own. things that make you pass out from the episode, I did notice on this rewatch a very funny choice by Charlie for when you guys light the wicker chairs on fire and it like gasses you in the in the trailer and they, they, you open up the thing and Charlie is just face oh, yes. down. Yeah. Yeah. We were just laughing about that. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, I, so I, funny. He made the choice to to just lie face, to face yeah. directly face down, just, arms at his sides. As if backwards, had, yeah. As if you just like, yeah. We, we've always enjoyed that kind of That's fall so where so, you get knocked out instantly and your arms are not, you don't even stop yourself. Yeah, your just, arms just at your sides. No, just just I remember thing. wanting to do it in a way that it was like, it seemed really believable that he made no effort to stop himself. Yes. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. But also I remember being like, you know, you got to wait for a, a good chunk of dialogue before they open the thing and just be like, this is uncomfortable. This is straight on my face. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, straight but down on your knowing face. Knowing it would be funny, be like, but it'll be a good bit. It's worth it, yeah. The biggest laugh for me in that whole episode is the hibachi grill legs <laughs> kicking up and sliding out. Like, I'm proud of the, the joke, like the writing of the joke, but I'm really proud of the special effects team. That's a pretty sweet duct tape rig you got going on the door, man. Yeah, you like that? Tape the chairs down, too, so oh, don't slide I know, any. I know, but you stopped at the grill, and that's got me confused. Ran out of tape, actually. Uh, yeah. Right, it's not gonna slide through the crack? It won't, because I measured the crack, and the crack is smaller than the height of the grill. We're all hooked up here, dude. Mm -hmm. A shot got a beer? That'll calm the nerves. It sure will. Let's turn it up. Do you remember yes. how hard it was for that to happen? No. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, we had to get filament to 
pull the the leg sideways and then have someone pull it straight yes. out. Now, but at the time we were very very frustrated and we had a we had a great special effects team, but for some reason this was the one that stumped them. Because you had to get the timing exactly <laughs> yeah. right. So I remember exactly how this happened because you guys were in the oh, in, in the van. Oh, sorry, also yes. I, you know what I do remember? Also the time and this maybe was what you're talking about mm -hmm. when you say timing because it wasn't like when to do it. It was starting it slow and then speeding it up. Yes. Like yeah, that was yeah, my, like, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. do we yank it out? And it's like, no. Yes. <laughs> do we do it all slow? No. You start slow and you, it's like, it's gotta be like it hits a bump. So it's gotta go boom, boom. Uh -huh. And then the legs have to And then the legs have to collapse. Yeah. And, the, and, and the legs have to collapse slow. at the same time. Uh -huh. It can't go one, one. It uh -huh. doesn't yeah, look yeah, as funny. Yeah, it's gotta yeah, go bump, yeah. bump, and then out. And then, that's and right. so, so we're, we're, we're thinking, well, we're in Hollywood, but we know that at this point our show is a piece of shit and, and we don't have any money. <laughs> so we got to figure out now, again, we've seen dinosaurs on screen in 1993 and yeah. yet we can't just get this goddamn hibachi grill to just do what we needed to do. They wound up having two, th two special effects guys, one on one side of the trailer, one on the other. They cut a hole through the, through the van That's and right. they pulled the string this way. And then a third special effects guy that pulled the thing out. That's right. And you know why? Because the van, the, the tightness of the van is such that we couldn't put two guys in there to, to pull on the strings to have the legs come yes. out. So we had to like drill through the, the, yes. the yeah. U-Haul. Oh and originally what they did was they fed the wire this way, right? And then threw a little like snake hole out. Mm -hmm. So the time, the way that they had so without drilling a hole. So all three guys were on the other side of the truck and pulling, but how do you get the timing right where the, the tension isn't this way, the tension is this way, but then eventually it's got to pull like through a pulley system. But it's also it was funny. so complicated. There's so many different ways. Until they got it. And Until they like, got it. Thank God we spent the time yes. on it because it's, yeah. it's like a Definitely huge laugh. Yeah. 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 You, yeah, you wouldn't think that it would be that difficult, but it's also like, because we have a very specific sort of like timing in mind of what we want to happen. It's like, as you said, it's got to fall, both legs have to collapse first. Mm -hmm. And then there's got to be like a, the tiniest micro beat. And then it just, yeah. you know what I mean? And then you guys have such a funny reaction. of <laughs> just like staring at it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, not, it's yeah, like a high muted that reaction. Up, that part up, yeah. There's sort of, there's the air of like, yeah, that was, we could have seen that coming. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love the, 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 that, I yeah. love the, the <laughs> attitudes throughout the entire episode. It's always fun when characters are on the same page or excited and happy and having fun. So Dennis and Frank, when they first get in, back there, how excited they are and how mm -hmm. on board they are. And there's yeah. very little fighting. There's very little argument. It's more, they might have a little disagreement, but Dennis is up for anything. And Frank's mm -hmm. up for anything. That's fun. Same thing when Charlie got back there as well. Everybody's excited. playing those colors as Dennis. I miss th like playing, the, you know, the the like, you know, still calm and still everything, but and still kind of narcissistic and full of himself, but like, I don't know, not always angry. Just, What's that, what, it's mean? a like, simple my, my story. Pretty happy it's a simple the story. Episode. There's no big theme we're trying to jam in there. There's no like, well, it's a, they're going on a road trip, but it's really about, uh, you know, we're really saying it's about X, Y, Z, it, no. They're trying to go on a road trip and they're unable to pull it off. And that's it. So it allows for those grounded moments because people can relate to it, right? Like we don't have to, we don't have to sort of invent a, a motive for why people would want to go on a road trip. Like mm -hmm. people go on road trips. So yeah. So then then we have nothing but free reign to then be like, okay, well, what are the funny things that happen that keep them from going on this road trip? Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't, it wouldn't make sense to have any like heightened. Arch One person ways. that we've talked about on the podcast in the past, um, and now people can put a face to his name, is Cha-Cha. Cha -cha. So Cha-Cha, who we've mentioned on the podcast, was Danny's friend, um, who may or may not have been Hang in on. a certain organization <laughs> that may or may not have existed somewhere in the Northeast you part of this country. That. We can't say for sure, but yeah. we were... It could be that he possibly was a member of one of those or types of like organizations. Like the American Legion? Like, what are you referring yeah, to? I don't, yeah, what are you referring whatever. To? The, the Carpenters Union, something I like that. I ain't saying shit. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, like a fruit vendor. Now, the thing is that Cha-Cha has, has since passed, so we're, all, we're, yeah. we're clear to talk about yeah. it in many different ways, so, but none of the ways that will get us beaten up or murdered. Mm. Ideally. Cha-Cha was the best. He was, the, he was so he great. Wasn't he a boxing promoter for yes. Tony Danza? And that's how... Danny met him? Yes. Yeah. Cha-Cha and I had a night where he took me to a, um, a fight at Madison Square Garden. What? We hung yeah. When so, was this? Around that time, I guess. I was in New York City. And, 
Oh, it was, I don't know. It was something like we were shooting in Philly and then there was a big fight coming up at Madison Square Garden and I was talking to Cha about it. I think it may have been, even been when we were doing that episode. And he was like, I, yeah. He was like, I could, I could get us into that fight, you know? <laughs> and I was like, well, let's, let's do it. You know what I mean? So I went to New York and I stayed in New York and I, I went to his, he had a, he had a, a, a coffee, uh, like a cafe bakery. On Mulberry Street? On Mulberry, Mulberry Street. Street. Yeah, 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 yeah. Little Italy. Oh, little Italy. Yeah, it was like a gelato yeah. place. It was gelato. Yeah. It had pizza. It had lots of things. Yeah, lots of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had, had coffee. It had <laughs> calzones. Whatever you wanted, you could get there. Uh -huh. And everybody sure. knew Cha Cha. Everybody. Everybody knew Cha Cha. Everybody knew Cha. And so, you know, he, he I went there and I met him there. You know, he, he, he fed me, gave me some espresso. Then we went to the fight together. And uh, had a blast, and you know everybody at the stadium knew him, like everybody, you know. And uh, we just we just had a really really fun night, and I think very fondly on Cha Cha because he really he really like hosted that night. It was and it was it was really cool. He's well, he was those, a great guy. Those scenes down in the Italian market are like they feel very alive. There's a lot mm -hmm. of pedestrians, and you know we didn't like pay for like 200 extras that day. We were just filming down in the, mm -hmm. the market, and you know I'm mm -hmm. sure we had like 15 or 20 people. Maybe we. You know, had them cross through. That wasn't the two. Italian market, to be clear. Yeah, at, uh, in Philly. Yeah, but like we, that was still at a time where I think we could shoot and we wouldn't draw a huge crowd, right? And I think yeah, two thousand, yeah, season five, not yet. Right? Yeah, we could still get away with it. Although I do remember people yelling to Danny when we were driving around the okay, block. Okay, yes. But when we hit the guy with the with the, by the way, the stunt guy nailed it going over yeah. the uh, bike. Yeah, he and, sure did. We'll start. We'll start that from the beginning because that was a really fun moment in the shooting of the show that we reference a lot because it was very specific. We were going around a big loop. So when we were shooting, we would just, because I had to throw it at that guy's head and I think I missed like three times, but we had to do this giant loop around this one neighborhood in mm -hmm. Philly where we would just go yeah. up and down the street. And but, the car's being towed, right? So and the car's I'm being not, towed. I'm not really driving, it's a, uh, yeah. Right, and so we have a camera car shooting us and then, and so we're just going around and we're passing the same houses and the same people. And no one knew our show, inclu including people in Philadelphia, but everybody knows Danny. So, the neighbors were out on their stoops and every time we would pass by, they mm -hmm. would yell out at hey, us. Hey, Danny. Hey, Danny, come on over, Danny. Yeah. I'll make you some ZD. And then we'd be passing yeah, and then yeah, yeah. we'd turn around we'd come back around. And then just more and more hey, people. Hey, Danny. Yeah. And we had a joke, running joke in the car about it getting more extreme. Like, oh, Danny, come over and let me tie you up in the basement for a few <laughs> Danny, hours. Danny, let John. me wear your face, Dan. <laughs> Danny, I got a spot only in the take off the foot. Come here, Danny. <laughs> Danny, just a little piece of your body. <laughs> for the basement, for the trophy room. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> Danny, I'll bake you into a CD. Come here, Danny. <laughs> Danny, can we eat you for dinner yeah. tonight? Danny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody wanted a piece. Everybody they wanted, wanted a piece, everybody of, Danny. Wanted a piece yeah. of Danny. They mm -hmm. wanted a piece, you know. Who who can blame him? Who can blame him? And, and then, if, uh, and then also, if you remember from that shoot, um, one of the trucks got hit by lightning. <laughs> one of our camera trucks got hit by lightning. No, I don't remember that. Oh yeah, we were shooting Go down on. there. And there was a thunderstorm, a lightning storm Ooh, out of nowhere. I remember it was a huge thunderstorm. Yeah, and you don't really know where to go because we don't have a set. So the neighbors were like, "You can come into our house." We're come like, "No, nah, no, nah, we don't." Take really. our chances with the lightning. Yeah, we'll take our chances <laughs> yeah, with the lightning. Gonna, like, we go up yeah. into these truck, <laughs> these giant metal trucks, which of course are grounded from the tires, but still, it's terrifying. And like the trailers, like shaking and whatnot. And then one of our trucks got hit by hit by lightning. Jesus. Oof, uh, what happened? Did it like blow up or like? No, <laughs> nothing. Maybe that's why this episode is so good because it's like infused it was, with the power of by lightning. Yeah. Thunder lightning. Struck. It's infused for the power of Zeus. Zeus, mm. yep. Right, power of it. Zeus came through us um, um, with this episode. A lot of Philly stuff. Yeah, you, did you shoot this entire? Other than the sh the scenes in the bar and in front of the bar, did you shoot all of it in Philly? Like the no. gas station scenes and stuff. There's, no, gas no, that was, was LA. that was in LA, uh, not far, I believe, not far from the Patty set. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a loop so well. in downtown. Yeah. yeah, that like could really pass for Philly because it was just very urban and yeah, not a lot like of like when palm D runs up and chases you guys. Like that yeah, was in LA. that's LA. LA. That was downtown um, LA. Yeah. And I wonder, because we haven't been shot down there in a while, like the more and more we go down in the neighborhood- It's the nicer more, and nicer. It's nicer we can't and even, nicer. We can't even shoot outside of that patty set very much anymore because it's got, it went from judgment night to like, <laughs> you know, hipster, hipster yeah. night. Do you remember like in the early years where whatever that, we might've talked about this in the podcast, the guys across the street- Oh yeah. Would, would just lay on their like car horn yeah. when we were filming and our line producer had to go over and just give them cash. 
It was just a. It was just extorting. It was just a yeah. shakedown. I kind of see both sides of that. Though. <laughs> no, I, sure. I, I, I mean, they were shooting on my sh street like two weeks ago, and I pulled up, and they were like, "You can't go up there." And I was like, "No, I live up there." And they're like, "Sorry, you can't go through." And I was like, "I'm sorry. You're <laughs> telling me I can't go to my house?" And they're like, "Yeah, they're filming." And I was like. I'm going to drive. And if you get in yeah. front of my car, I'm going to run you over. Like, what the fuck? And of, of course, it's like some poor PA. Who's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some like kids, the first day on the job, like I was told not to let anyone up the street. Totally. I really want to work in TV. And uh, totally. Yeah. But like the, the, the guys, the guys uh, across the street from us, they had a business and we would just shut the street down or we would do like intermittent. Yeah, they had a business control. like Cha-Cha had a business. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> cars come in, cars go out. <laughs> Whose cars they have? I don't know. <laughs> but the horns fucking work. So give me cash. But that one time in, in particular, I remember, and they were started, they started to blare music out yeah. of their cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was because the, they were told that they couldn't bring, they had some importing, exporting business. That's right. Actually, bring their somebody trucks told them they couldn't bring their trucks in. Yeah. And they were like, this is our business. You just, you can't shut down the street yeah. unless you yeah. pass. And mm -hmm. so we paid them. Yeah. I see it from their perspective. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's a middle. I think what you're ground. saying is there's a middle ground. <laughs> in that case, there is a middle ground. There is a middle ground. <laughs> All right. Who here hates cooking? Oh, who God. Who hates cooking? Thank you. Overrated. It's just, it's, it's so much time and energy. Hours of shopping and prep and cooking and cleaning. Also, it's just not economical. Well, check it out, Charlie. We're sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. They ship fresh, nutritious meals made with high protein. Oh, I love that. I love protein, guys. Yeah. Big protein guy. I love Factor, especially the Protein Plus meals because they are extra filling and great for my busy days where I want a quick and healthy meal. Well, that's a huge boon when we're busy on set. You know, we're just kicking off production and there's hardly ever time to fit a meal into your schedules. Well, we do have a caterer. You're aware of this, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, but the, the caterer, he's not dietitian approved. Factor is, you know, plus it only takes two minutes to heat up versus trudging over to the truck and, you know, waiting in line. Yeah, who's it, making you wait in line? Well, I'm not, I cut to the front. But yeah, you don't wait long, yeah, right? Yeah, you no, know. but I'm saying in theory. Be like Glenn. Don't let anyone stand in the way of your mealtime ever again. Head to factormeals.com slash sunny50 and use code sunny50 to get 50% off your first box. So that's code sunny50 at factormeals.com slash sunny50 to get 50% off your first box. What else from this? One oh, course? Runaway Train. Well, Caitlin's oh, yeah. performance, in the, performance in the Runaway in the Runaway Train uh, scene. And your performance is, is getting the piss in the face. It's very real. Like, yes. Yeah, you played. <laughs> well, that I really real. got slapped in the face with apple juice or something yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So you were feeling the I'm actual feeling, you're feeling frustration. It. Now that kid's got to be uh, oh, yeah. 62, 63 <laughs> yeah, years old now. Shannon McCain. I'll Shannon look it up. McCain. What's his name? Shannon McCain. Shannon McCain. What's he up to? Is he? So you've been working on old Shannon McCain? He is 38 years old now. Oh. Wow, and, uh, that's crazy. It does appear as Did he get he into the porn? still regularly working. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Did he didn't have to get into the porn like, like do you uh, thought? No, with that tiny little body with of his. With that tiny little body <laughs> <laughs> That tiny, tiny little body of his. Um, so that means he was 24 yeah. when he did it. Did the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think Runaway Train was your pitch. I feel like maybe I remember like working on that and like we might have had some different song or something. And I think. I, I wasn't like, in the break. Uh, maybe it was, but maybe it was it's something because, you had in the room because I feel like mm -hmm. you liked that song. I liked, well, I liked that, that. I remember that song being on the summer of probably 1990, I'm going to say four. Sure. The summer of 1994. That sounds right. That song was on constantly. Yep. And the video, they would play the video and it was all about like runaways. And then it became a whole marketing campaign uh, where they were talking about how many lives the song saved because people were, the runaways were inspired to like call home or come home. And this was like all engineered by MTV. And I thought, man, <laughs> it just seemed like such a scam to sell, to sell records. Right. As if there were like kids on the street that would hear that song and be like, oh, you know what? I'm the runaway train. I'm the runaway train. I'm what I gotta do is get back in, in touch scenario. with my, my family who's, who's definitely looking for me. That's why I ran away in the first place. <laughs> they're, they're really, um, right. They're really upset. That's the nuclear family yeah. that I need to yeah. be. Yeah. I love that she's like, you need to hear the song. This has got a message for you. And then she cannot remember the words. Yeah. <laughs> it just delivers all the emotion, but yeah. few of the words. I also so like that she fun. she immediately invade is like invading his space. Like <laughs> yeah. she's she's gotten drunk like so fast. And she also mimes like you get she starts moving yeah. as 
like before she reveals the piss jar, yeah. Yeah. she does a couple uh-huh. movements, which mm-hmm. like on second viewing, you're like, oh, that was that, her zipping up yeah. at the end. Yep, yep, <laughs> like, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got something you need to hear about. Hang on a second. Just easier than dealing with the pain. One way train, never come back. One way on a one way track. Right. Like I actually got this uncle out there well. that said that I'm gonna I'm be the hero there. Run away, train, staring at the soundtrack. Run away, train, staring at the track. open mouth jar yes yeah. like so how did she I, <laughs> that's that's a bunch of dudes right well, how, how does it work and then being like hey, hey, caitlin just figure it out i don't know she's a good good aim <laughs> wonder how many of her cars we wrecked so we wrecked the the first the blue one and mac and charlie die and then this one gets stolen and then we we wrecked the one at the mcpoyle wedding massacre i drive right. it into the pole i yep. think it's a purple pt cruiser uh-huh. yep 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 that is that it? There's a few. And that's maybe it. I don't remember. Three's a lot. Three's a lot of Three's cars. Three's a lot of cars. Three's a lot of cars to break. Yeah. To yeah. destroy. Um, what, do you remember anything else about the writing of this episode, uh, Charles? Nope. Me either. <laughs> um, you guys, you know, did you have all that? What I like about it is that there's just the simplicity and just mixing up the pairings. Like somebody goes back into the mm-hmm. back and then somebody moves to the front seat and like that kind of energy mm-hmm. of the story is just really funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but was that planned or did you guys yeah. just be like, generally they're going to be on a road trip? And- I mean, I think it's, it's, so, long, it's so long ago. It's really hard to remember. Yeah, it's hard to remember. Like, I mean, I don't think we would have gone into writing it without there being some. I don't think we broke them in the detail that we break the story is now like sometimes we did and sometimes we didn't sometimes we're like they go on the road trip this happens they go to the farmer's market we do the blueberry run the car gets stolen you know like mm-hmm. like a, a the ocular yeah. pat down um i think you improv improv on that on the day possibly i mean i remember roselle pitching the sheriff of patties okay <laughs> so that was probably in the, the sheriff because right, it comes back in the last scene yeah, yeah. so but i think yeah, the ocular time. pat down thing joke i'm pretty sure you came up with though yeah, I did an ocular pat down and I cleared him. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry? I'm saying that I did an ocular assessment of the situation, garnered that he was not a security risk, and I cleared him for passage. Ocular pat down? What in the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about breaking down the security situation, clearing an individual, and making it safe for passage. Oh, well, how exactly do you view yourself within the context of our group? The Sheriff of Patties. Well, I can't. I can't have this conversation. The right now. Of can you move? I want to unfold this thing. I'm gonna pass out. But my favorite part of that whole thing was uh, is setting that up, and then in the end, finding out that Charlie is also very much aware of the process, and and he he's you like, cleared you cleared him. him. I, I thought assume, we were, we were good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, and that, I, I thought he, that cleared him. You, he said it, the kid was clear, so I figured. Yeah. Which is if great. that cleared Come, him, we're good. Coming off the heels yeah. of us having no idea how yeah. you view yourself, yeah. and, and to, to, the funny reveal that we've had these conversations yeah. many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also yeah. liked the little run about the glaze on the chairs. You guys being that yeah, must have been some went sort up of real quick. glaze. Yeah, poison glaze. <laughs> yeah, because we pass out instantly. Pass out instantly. Pass out instantly. Well, uh, well, I don't remember how we did. I guess we just had a smoke machine in there. I don't remember how we did that. Yeah, I think it was just. I think it was just that. Yeah. I don't think it was anything more complicated than that. Thank God we didn't have to actually set anything on fire, because they they send the whole fire department when you do that. Fucking light a candle these days on set, and the whole fire department's got to show I, up. Like, I tried to cook my husband dinner on Friday, and the fire department call, called. <laughs> no, why? Which is oh, you, you set off an alarm. I did. I set off our own fire alarms, and apparently we have a we have it's somehow connected to like the security alarm, and then they they called us, and then the fire department called, and so two very bar- embarrassing conversations. With my husband just had to be like, "No, my wife's just cooking." Yeah, it doesn't happen very often. Mm-hmm. That's probably why we haven't been. So they actually anyway. came by. Now, no, okay. no, they just. They oh, just they did. Okay, all right. Well, so I had an experience. Uh, I don't know. It was maybe about a year ago, and we were we had like a busted pipe in our landscaping, and we had like expanded our landscaping. So I knew where the landscaping uh, the the controls were for turning off all the water that goes to the landscaping except there's this is like a new section of landscaping that had been done and it wasn't on the same pipe so i was like i don't know how to stop this and there's fucking water geysering 
So we had to call, we had to call, uh, I don't know if we called, I guess we've called the fire department or somebody. I don't know. Up. Yeah, I guess we did. But they, they show, you know, we were just like, just like, why do you always have to show up in a fire truck? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like midnight, you know, like the whole waking the whole neighbor, neighborhood up, the siren got like blaring, honking the horn, like lights blowing up, you know, we're just like, oh man. This is fireman, a- fireman. Fireman. Oh, we have well, to, stay by the way, horns be. And, and I, 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 these guys got out. I, uh, I it was There's nothing more emasculating. It's so emasculating. Hey bud, you want us to turn your water off for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. <laughs> you want us to come in there and take care of your wife too? Yeah. You can turn her on water. <laughs> Every, every you know single I mean? guy was was like six foot three on average. You know what I mean? Like no one was below six foot three. Mm-hmm. It was like six foot three and above. Every single guy, I'm not kidding you, looked like he could be a male model. <laughs> we got the calendar shoot right after this. So, yeah. so it looks like it. Yeah. I will say I noticed I noticed the, a major difference when I first moved to Los Angeles with the police force. I noticed the the LAPD and the California State uh, the Highway Patrol. Those are some big people mm. and in shape people. Even the, and the, even if the women aren't large, they seem like they're in very good shape. And all the cops I knew in New York and Philly, yeah, fat as hell. Yeah, not really the, <laughs> or skinny, but like never like not in like the kind of California shape. Where mm. yeah, right. You know, These you, are California firemen and yeah, policemen, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, just. Coming correct, right? Just coming like, straight from the gym, <laughs> like hitting the gym at four a.m. every single morning. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Cooking, cooking. Uh, you know, sticking to a a paleo diet down there at the at the firehouse, right? Cooking everybody mm-hmm. chicken and vegetables. Let's mm-hmm. lay off the rice, guys. We're gaining a few <laughs> lbs when we show up to these people's house. We really got to make the men feel small. That's our primary yeah. goal here, right? Putting out fires, absolutely every time if we can. More important than that, though, impressing the woman and emasculating the man. <laughs> that's why they became firemen in the first place, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. I think you're absolutely uh, right. Let's I eat go with stickers that. all the time. Was that an improv on the day? Or was oh, de- that def- I can't remember. Definitely. The whole thing? Yeah, it was pretty gross. The stem and then the, the core? You didn't tell me not to eat the stem, dude. Did you eat the stickers that are all over it? Yeah, it was gross. Of course it's gross. It's a sticker. Bro. I eat stickers all the time, oh, dude. Oh, my God. This whole thing is a disaster. I'm going back to the car. We fought about that in the in, yes, in the editing did. room. Yes, we did. Because you were we we both were on the same page where you're like, yeah. uh, I thought it was funny. Yeah. Because you improv to I yeah. eat stickers all the time, and you were like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. We're now we're establishing like, that, that mean? Charlie eats stickers all the time, and we're like, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. good. You guys remember that too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look, I'll, I'll fully admit that that there's there's just and everybody's got a line, right? Everybody's got a line. So like that's earlier seasons, right? So maybe the characters aren't have gone as crazy yet. So you're you're still having the conversation, you know, do or do they not eat stickers? You know, by season six and seven, we know that Charlie and Frank and possibly sometimes maybe Mac eat stickers. <laughs> sure. Like, Sure. You eat contracts and all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's wolf hair in your feces. There's wolf hair. That was season so. three. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's so I, we, yeah, credit, pieces of a credit card, wolf hair, yeah, yeah. like all mm-hmm. inconclusive, of course. The line is always changing and, yeah. and always, but we just had a conversation this morning. I know. Where Glenn was pointing something out that was like, I don't think this makes any kind of rational sense. And Charlie and I are both like, I can yeah, see, even I, I can know. feel, like, I, there's part of me that just, want, like, in those moments, I want to back down just because I, 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 I I could just sense you guys being like, oh, no. It's yeah, but we didn't fight back, though. No, you didn't. We didn't fight didn't. back. We I were like, feel the energy. We were like, okay, okay, um, let's let's see. Let's pivot. Let's see if we can figure yeah. it out. Yeah. And, but and because also, there, is a, there is a tendency to want to just be like, well, come on, man. Like, we, we do crazy shit all the time. Why is it this thing? But we each have one of those moments throughout mm-hmm. the week where you're like, no, this is my line. And we can either like, tell the person they're being stupid or we can kind of figure well, out. And by way the way, I, I usually like to be like, do you guys stand behind, do you fully stand behind this? And if you do, and mm-hmm. you guys are like, this is amazing. I fully stand behind it. I still might fight back a little bit, but, I, but I'll eventually just be like, all right, I'm just going to back off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. Because... I don't feel like you do it that often. It's just every no. now and then. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it's... Like it's, if the joke is really funny... You know, you probably get a little insecure, but <laughs> poke some holes in it. You know? Uh, no, you know what it is? It's actually the opposite. It's when I'm like this, if it's really, really funny, I care less about how ground grounded it is. You know what I mean? If it's making no, me, it's just, but, that's it, my, but that's my, me thinking something's funny or not funny. You know, whereas you guys might find something funny that I'm like, I don't even think that. So not only is that not funny, 
but it but it also there's that's not grounded in any sort of reality that I can believe. Yeah, that's it. It's that's just a reality thing, right? Yeah. That's the sticker thing for you or the gun thing with Frank in the in the episode where he's shooting in that thing where you're like It's just not that funny to me. So I'm like, why are we bending yeah. reality for some but it's funny to you guys and it's funny to a lot of people in the audience. So it's like, okay, well, you yeah, know, yeah. it is what it is. What about now? Is the sticker thing funny to you now? No. Nope. Did you find it? No. So not not that like funny. It. But yeah. I can appreciate why I I understand why other people think it's funny. Uh I just don't think it's that funny. I mean, I think you don't we, buy that the guy would eat stickers all the time. No, I buy that you would have eaten the sticker on the pear, and that that it tasted awful, and that you ate the stem and the seeds and all that kind of shit because mm -hmm. you don't know how to eat a pear. Like I, I mm -hmm. somehow that's okay with me, but mm -hmm. uh, this is the one step past. The it's the one step the past where you say like I eat stickers all the time. That means that means you're a man who looks at a sticker and goes, I'm going to eat that. Yeah, probably just like a scratch and sniff sticker, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, see, they, now they that smell saved so it. good. Yeah. So that additional line would have bought it back for you if he was like, "What are you talking about? Like, you scratch, you sniff, you taste. You scratch, you sniff. <laughs> it's like you're... it's just scratch and sniff. Yeah. <laughs> Since when? <laughs> it's scratch, sniff, and taste. Scratch, sniff, and taste. The That's ones right. on the bananas do taste like bananas. <laughs> um, have you guys ever been to the Grand Canyon? I have. I yeah. have. Yeah. You've seen it never. once. Really? You've never gone. Mm -mm. Mary Elizabeth and I uh, did a road trip once with our dog many years ago, our first dog, Arthur. And um, it was two degrees when we got to the Grand Canyon. Oof. And Arthur had to take a crap. And I remember like the steam coming off of it. <laughs> like, he just like squeezed one out, took a dump at the Grand Canyon. We stayed at like a red roof in, you know? Yeah. It's the old days. The old days, right? And looked at it and was like, this is really sad, but looked at it and was like, yeah, sure. You know, oh, like, really? Yeah, I think because I'd seen things in books and on television so many times. Yes, what, what is it impressive? Of course. But there's something about uh, this world that we live in now that you have access to things so much. You're Like, I imagine seeing that for the first time when you're riding your horse across the country and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> hole! Big hole! hole. <laughs> yeah. We got a hole. Big hole! Big hole! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could be the end of the world. This, Not sure. Yes, this Not is where sure. the world is. It is strange because I've flown over it so many times because yeah. that is the direct route back to the East Coast. And so you look at it from the sky and of course it's imp it's impressive. It's a massive gorge, but because of the scale, because of the height, yeah. you're like, it, you can't really get a sense of it. Cause yeah. So I'm kind of like, eh, I get it. Yeah. I had the exact opposite reaction. Uh, I did not, I actually expected, well, maybe it's because my expectations were low. I fully expected to not be impressed by it because I'd seen so many pictures of it, right? Yeah. I'm like, well, I mean, I just, it's mm -hmm. not, it's a fucking hole in the ground. Like, who gives a shit? Uh, but, but, you know, whatever it was, we were on a road trip. My girlfriend and I at the time, it was the early 2000s, and we just, we were like, let's stop by the Grand Canyon. Great. Went to the Grand Canyon. We went to like this one area where you could really like stand like really close to the edge, and um, which is maybe a lot of it but I was absolutely floored. To me, it gave me the feeling of being like, oh, I'm so small and insignificant yeah. in a way that actually is like kind of great. And yes. I found it really, yeah. I P felt the Pictures same way. of space do that for me, where yeah. you see like how many galaxies there are and you're like, wait, oh. wait, we're one dot yeah. in one of these things. Like I find that comforting. But the yeah. Grand Canyon, I was like, oh, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> We interrupt this podcast to talk about, Meg, your favorite subject, boners. Oh, yay. You know what? Blue Chew is back. Choo, choo, the Blue Chew train. Blue Chew is an online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. And now they also have... Vardenafil mint flavored chewables with the active ingredient in Levitra and Staxin, so you can stay hard and fresh. Yeah! So no more having your partner tell you you taste like boner pills. Blue Chew's tablets are a performance enhancement for the bedroom and can help men gain extra confidence when it's time to perform. Hey, you know what else? What? It's simple. And affordable. So even while prices continue to rise, so can your, Meg? Penis. Penis. Oh! If you don't think you need it, you haven't tried it. And here's a special deal for you listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code SUNNY at the checkout. Just pay $5 shipping and get those free boner pills, man. That's BlueChew.com promo code SUNNY to receive your first month for free. 
thought we'd get through one of these without hearing from Athletic Greens. Well, you've got donkey brains. That's right, because we are once again supported by Athletic Greens and their delicious green powder, AG1. With one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Uh, Keyword? Absorbing. Right. Not every multivitamin gives you so many important nutrients that your body can actually absorb. So absorbing everything it can is a good thing? Oh, yeah, no, it's good. It's good. My body's working at 100% efficiency. Yeah, my body is absorbing every single nutrient and not wasting a single thing. Your body is taking its job very seriously, isn't my it? My body's doing its job like it never has done it before. Mm-hmm. You know? Plus, AG1 supports muscle recovery and better sleep quality, which is a big reason I take it every day. It also has less than one gram of sugar sugar, no GMOs or nasty chemicals, and no artificial anything. Because, spoiler alert, you don't <laughs> want to be absorbing that. Go green instead with Athletic Greens. Yeah. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash sunny. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash sunny to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Have you guys ever hitchhiked and or picked up a hitchhiker before? Yes. No. Yeah? Which one? No, Both? no, I think for me. In New, in New Jersey. Hitchhiking? In New Jersey, like, you know those- You picked sh- one up or no, you were both. hitchhiking? Many oh. times, yeah. You've hitchhiked? But I have, but not like a not like a hobo across the country. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, you know, like Jersey Shore towns, like in Shore towns where people are just going back and forth to different like vacation spots, the people will be hitchhike all the time. Okay. I've hitchhiked many, many times. I mean, through like entire summers, back and forth. And how many people did you uh, did you rob? How many people did you jack? Zero. Uh, I had I had I had zero negative. I got into a car accident one time with somebody Uh-oh. who was who who I was. I had hitched a ride with somebody who had been drinking, mm-hmm. and I should have said mm, maybe I'll get out of this one. I didn't, and I we got into an accident. And but it, any of these people, do they try to talk you into putting your mouth on them? I, I would have done it. I mean, <laughs> sure. At the time. At the what, time, just, I would have done it. And now, is that because you just were so appreciative of them giving you a ride and you were like, well, the least I can do is, is get my mouth on you? Mm. I'm just, I was trying to get my mouth on anything <laughs> I could. I was. Mm. Anything. Well, not a dick, but that just wasn't my thing. But like, yeah, I guess I'm. Well, you I, said I, you would have done it. I'm thinking, you did I'm, not I'm thinking more if it was. Like a, no, I was picturing a man, so. Interestingly enough, yeah. I didn't even go there. I went right to a woman, a young woman, asking me to put my mouth on her <laughs> for a ride. And yeah. that's never happened in the history of and human the history beings, of I think, right? No, no. I think it's going to be a man that's going to no, be doing sure. that. Yeah. I just, if I ran into Sizemore, maybe, but other than that, I'm Sizemore's not. Sizemore's going to want you to split them up yeah, like, like a coconut. coconut. Yeah, <laughs> like coconut. There's so many moments in this episode that that had me chuckling. Um, I'm trying to remember. Thing, you guys some, some trying to things. name the states I thought was very oh, funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Saying East Virginia and West Virginia and North Virginia and all the... <laughs> yeah. Some little things from my... Well, that... <laughs> that The East Virginia, West Virginia, North Virginia came from a thing that... I swear to God, I was like 25 or 20... No, 23. And I was in New York. And I was looking at a map of the United States. And I was looking at West Virginia... And it was like as if someone had told me there was like a West California. I was like, I just kind of, yeah. for, I'd forgotten about West Virginia. I just, just for, cause like, I'm like, what yeah. sports teams are like, you don't, you don't hear about it. Uh, there was a chunk of my life from like fifth grade when you learn the States to my adulthood mm-hmm. where I'd, I'd forgotten about West Virginia. <laughs> uh, so I think that like that state thing was going in there, like making fun of that. Also like the, her opting out for the cheaper uh, radio situation mm-hmm. uh-huh, was something that my bucks. parents had done in my childhood. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. I think I've said on this, where they, yes. I had a Honda yeah. Accord 1980, well, they had a Honda Accord 1985 with no radio. Yeah. Just a little plastic plate that said Honda because <laughs> it was cheaper to get the option with no uh-huh. yeah, So radio. not even not a CD player, not a tape deck, Nothing. no radio. No radio, man. So I would ride around with a boom box. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think music is distracting when you're driving and therefore dangerous. Yeah. Also, like they didn't like listen to like pop music. Like occasionally, like you could throw on a classical station. Though. Y- no. Yeah, right. Like you know, some NPR, awesome. the news it was usually sure. the news was on, or someone would sit at a piano and be like trying to fit, like knuckle out a, it's a, a look Chopin your, piece or something. I look at your parents, and they look like the physical embodiment of NPR. 
<laughs> you yeah. know, like that's like, yeah. that gets, it's like NPR in human form. Yeah, just they were, they were music uh, theory people, but not like, not like rock and roll people. Yeah, so, not rock, uh, yeah. yeah, so like, you know, my mom just teaching music class from kindergarten to eighth grade. My dad is teaching at the local college. And yeah, music everywhere, but right, not in the car. Yeah. But I got music in the car. So in high school, my buddy uh, Sean Coulter had a mail Jeep. Cool and name. he had he had put a, a radio in there that he'd sort of put in himself. And, and the radio had a brand name. It was called the Sparkomatic. Oh. Now I bought the Sparkomatic off of Coulter and put it in my car. Where I had, it didn't quite fit, so you had to put like little pieces of wood in there just to kind of like get it to stay in. Sweet. And it worked. Went to, had it for like, Two weeks went to one Motel Six party. Somebody stole the Sparkomatic. They jacked man. It. The Sparkomatic, dude. Oh, the Sparkomatic. Sp- of all things. Oh, Do man. you what think a that the absence of that, the hole that it left behind, led to your hatred of holes and why you weren't impressed <laughs> by the Grand <laughs> That's, That's a good right. callback. Because you were trying to yeah, do there. Yeah, I was trying to. Dovetail. To tie it all together. Yeah. This is what Meg does. Good why you're a great storyteller. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, one thing I I did uh, pick up on that I remembered in the conceiving of or the writing of the episode. I don't remember where it came. If it was in the break or if it just came when we were writing it was the French press getting the French <laughs> press at the Italian market because yeah. that came from a very specific. Um, I did a road trip from Alabama to Los Angeles. I. Uh, my high school car kind of died on me. And so I went back to Alabama and I bought my my mom's car, like an old Lexus ES. I was like, you know, driving across the country, you got to have, you got to have coffee, right? But the coffee at like gas, this is before there was a Starbucks at different exits, right? So the coffee, you could really only get coffee at like gas stations and stuff like that. So I was like, I'm going to buy, I'm going to bring my own coffee grounds and bring like just a little personal French press and I'll stop at the gas station. I'll fill up. I'll go inside and I'll ask where the hot water is, you know, for tea and stuff. And I would just go in the gas station and I would put my own coffee in the French press and I would fill it with water. Excuse me, sir. Where's your hot water for tea? (laughs) You know, I that's the glenniest Glen shit I've ever heard. And yet- it makes absolute sense. It does, right? It's definitely the thing that I would make, f- and at the time did make fun of you for, and would still make fun of you for, but also would love, I would love to enjoy a cup of that coffee. Well, exactly. So it now, makes so absolute sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just so a- particular, but it also is fantastic. Yes, no, it is very, it is very, very Glenn. You're absolutely right. Adding as many steps to my life as possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why, Rob I, would have just sucked somebody off for a better cup of coffee, right? right? He would have yeah, just, yeah, he was getting a lift it. across the country. Yeah, he he would have let the guy it. drink an espresso and then sucked his yeah. car and got the caffeine that way. I mean, that's when uh, the show is at its best. Like everyone's bringing stuff from their own lives and you know, you get Martyr's Blueberry Story and like just every little thing's going in there. And then do we do that anymore? Is there anything, any piece of our That is the fear, that, right? The longer you're in the business that you're like, uh, do I live enough of a life to- oh, Well, yes, I've thought about write, this a lot. Right to it. And, where I'm like, I need to just like take a year off and just like live, like refill- you know, have stories to tell. I don't have, you know, you're, mm. if you're working all the time, you run out of stories to tell. In the you're writer's only... room, we very typically go, what do people do? <laughs> yeah, like that, that question <laughs> comes up. <laughs> what now do and people then, do? What do people do? What do like, people what's who... a thing that people do? <laughs> Especially if you've been working together for so long, you already know what everybody's parents did to fuck them up. And that's what every writer's room is anyway, is like people trying to like mine their, their history and try to f- figure out who they are and why they are like that and then put it like imbue it into the characters. And we've already, we already know, all this. I know all uh, the secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all the secrets. Yeah. Oh boy. They've already gone to the show. Oh boy. Do you guys have any travel destinations still on your bucket list you'd like to see before you die? Anything you want to check out? Uh, Maybe the Grand Canyon, Rob? Nah, I'm not nah, really interested nah, nah. in the Grand Canyon it's pretty awesome, as dude. much. I want to. I want to go to. Um, I want to go to Africa. I've never been to Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd um, love to go to Egypt. Yeah, I would like to go to Egypt. So uh, definitely, I want to see the pyramids before I die, for sure. I have a million places. I, I want to go everywhere. Just uh, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at some point, mm-hmm. some yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. the next trip we're taking is just right across the way to the stages <laughs> where yeah, you guys are going to live for the next. We walked into uh, the bar uh, oh, today and uh, every season since like 
five or six, I get a crazy sensation walking into that bar yeah. mm-hmm. where it feels like your home and it feels like this place that you've lived and that in a weird way you also are the character even though you're you i know this sounds psychotic but like you've worked there for a long time yeah it's you you click into something immediately stepping on that stage maybe that's part of what you're talking about like you step onto the stage and you start to feel like you're becoming the character again or a little bit and you feel the history of how many years we've been working on that Stay in that set and in that bar. And There's also still the excitement, especially in the very beginning where everything's still being put together and all the electricians are there and the construction yeah. people are there and props are there and wardrobe is there and the ADs are there. And there's an energy to it. Like yeah. It's all coming yeah, back maybe together. It's that, but it's, it, to me, it's like the floor and the bar and mm-hmm. the space and certain little triggers like yeah, that. Yeah, it takes me all the way back to the Herald Examiner where we kind of found the location and started, you know, working yeah. on it the first time to all the years that we've been there. Yeah. To this weird like other life that I've lived where it's like I've been I've had a life, but I've also been this person for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And it's sweet. I love it. You know, it's like uh Well, you could really see the dust in the air though, couldn't you? Did you guys see that? You guys pick up on that? I I that's of course where my 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 brain goes. Too dusty. I walked on the stage and I was just like, Ooh, what am I breathing? Mm, what am I breathing? That was my subtle. first thought. Your first thought was like, yeah, you know. There's so much history here. So it's such a more, it's a much more healthy thought. You well, know I mean? you know, and I feel that way about movie sets, the way you feel about the Grand Canyon. <laughs> um, the magic is there know? for you on a movie yeah, the set. The magic's but... there for me in a false reality. So is mm-hmm. it better? I don't know. I'm not sure. I looked at the Grand Canyon. I saw a lot of dust. <laughs> <laughs>